Well, hello. Hey, that's mine. You can't. Yours is hello, 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 hello. Oh, all right. Yeah. Hello, hello. Another great day on the Isle of Mole. Now, this evening, we've got a treat for you. Come up to Glen Morn Standing Rocks, I believe they're called. Standing Stones. Standing Stones. Sorry, I've been corrected. And what these things are is, uh, well, just as the name implies, Standing Stones. <laughs> <laughs> here they are right here. And uh, actually, the clouds are absolutely brilliant tonight so we're hoping to get a, a nice sunset because we've been quite skunked the last few nights well actually tell a lie last night was fantastic but we were sitting there having a beer in the living room of the cottage so we missed it <laughs> so, <laughs> but tonight <laughs> we're trying to redeem ourselves so just waiting for the the sun to go down it was quite windy here earlier it was quite nice uh but now the winds died down and the midges have all come out, so it's not quite as nice. And I think the sheep are really uh, getting attacked by the midges because they seem to be making a lot of noise now. Get some nice silhouettes of the sheep on the hillsides there. But these rocks are, uh, are quite cool. I've never really seen anything like it. They're similar to kind of, you know, Stonehenge and, and that type of thing, except on a much smaller scale. It's, it is really beautiful out here, I must admit. <laughs> People are going to think we've dubbed that in as a sound effect. <laughs> Glengorm Estate and the uh, Standing Stones was an absolutely beautiful area. Now, of course, the weather really helped in this situation. Uh, if it had been raining, then it might not have been quite as nice. Now, the rocks themselves were quite difficult to photograph because, after all, they are, like I said in the video, uh, you know, just standing rocks. What made them unique is that they had such a beautiful surroundings. Now, it would have been great if they were a little bit closer to the ocean, so you get the ocean in the background, but the way that they were situated, you had that hill that kind of uh, got in the way a, a little bit of the ocean. But in some ways, that, that added a little bit of interest, especially with the gate in the background there. Now, I only did take one photograph. Uh, it, was, it was hard to find uh, different angles on, on these rocks, so the one photograph I was really happy with now, as far as exposure goes and, and photographing these things, uh, it was a little tricky because of the, the uh, brightness of the sun shooting right into the lens. Lens flare was a bit of a problem and getting the exposure right was also uh, an issue. So for this image, what I had to do was I took several images, some for the foreground at the right exposure and then I took some for the clouds and the sky. And then lastly, I took some for the sun, uh, just peeking out behind one of the rocks there because it was just so bright that I had to take some images that were really underexposed to try and keep control of, of uh, the highlights. Now in an ideal world, I'd rather just take one image and be done with it rather than fiddling with several images and combining them in Photoshop, but at least you have that option. And that's what I did with this. I got all of those images and I put them together and created this uh, image that you see here. What I find to be the hardest part about combining images like this is, is getting the exposure in the foreground right to kind of match the, the exposure of the sky, because sometimes it just looks too HDR to me. Uh, when we look at scenes like this with our eyes, Generally, the, the foreground seems a little bit darker than the sky, and that's what I've tried to do here. So I've, I've kept the sky as bright as possible. The only issue that I did have was that the, the greens and some of the yellows started to get a little bit saturated, so I have desaturated them a little bit. Uh, let me know what you think. Do you think they could be desaturated a little bit more, or do you like the colors to be nice and vibrant like I've portrayed here? Ah, 
nothing like being stuck on a small boat with a bunch of tourists. <laughs> I'm sure they were saying the same thing about photographers. I'd never heard of the Isla Staffa and it wasn't until Gavin started talking about it that uh, I started to get some interest in this little island. Uh, the island itself is about uh, a 40 minute boat ride from the Isle of Mull. And uh, the way that the boats were set up, uh, it ended up that we could only spend one hour on the island. Now, if we'd planned it right, we probably could have taken a boat early in the morning and then uh, stayed all day and taken another boat out. But uh, both Gavin and I don't seem to be that organized when it comes to time management. <laughs> so we ended up just going for an hour which is way too short a time. And of course, as soon as we got to the island, it was all engines, full steam ahead. So I took very, very little uh, video footage because I really wanted to try and get, uh, you know, one or two uh, half decent images from this area. And actually we spent so little time on the island that we didn't even walk to the top of the, uh, the island. We just stayed below uh, along the cliff line near the ocean. It was such a fascinating place and it's certainly an area that I would love to go back to and spend more time. Now the area that uh, Gavin really wanted to get a photograph of was uh, Fingal's Cave, which is not far from where the boat lands. And it was from an image that he'd seen uh, some time ago of the cave and he was just determined to get something similar. Now, I had no idea what uh, the island was like. I'd never seen any images from it, so it was all new to me, and uh, it was just absolutely stunning when we got there. The, uh, the basalt columns are just fascinating, and I could just spend hours and hours photographing uh, the rock formations there. But since we only had an hour, I managed to get a couple of shots that I really like, and I'll just go over those with you right now. Photographing the Isla Staffa for me was all about textures and lines. Just loved the lines of those basalt columns. And the first thing I thought about when I got to this area was that even though the ocean was quite rough, it wasn't so rough that it made a great subject on its own against the rock. So right off the bat, I decided to smooth it out by using a 10 stop ND filter. In this case, I was using the Breakthrough Photography uh, Magnetic 10 stop ND filter. And the reason why I wanted to do that is I didn't want the textures of the ocean competing against the textures of the rock. I just wanted to keep things really simple. So in all of the images, except for the, uh, the pink flowering uh, sea thrift, I used ND filters to, to really drag that shutter so that we had this uh, kind of surreal, uh, ethereal water uh, texture uh, that contrasts really nicely with the texture of the rocks. In this next image, I love that contrast between the smooth water and the texture of the rock by using an ND filter. Now, if I show you this image here, where I used a faster shutter speed, you'll notice that the texture of the water is competing with the textures in the rock. And I certainly didn't want that. So that's why I used the 10 stop ND filter. A couple of other things that I had to do. Now, because I was using a relatively wide lens, in this case, a 30 millimeter, and I was pointing it downwards, you'll notice that the verticals aren't really vertical and the ocean is kind of leaning over to one side of the horizon line. So I had to fiddle around in, uh, in Photoshop to get the verticals relatively vertical and the horizon line straight across because those angles are quite important in this photograph. 
And here's a tip for those of you that don't know this. If you want to keep your verticals vertical, then keep the back of your camera parallel to whatever it is you're photographing. So if it's a building, if you keep the back parallel, even with a wide angle, then your verticals will be vertical. As soon as you point your camera down or up, then your verticals start to uh, go off kilter. One aspect of photography that I really enjoy is finding compositions and envisioning the end results before I even take the photograph. Now it doesn't happen that often, but now and then I can kind of see where I want to take the photograph before I even click the shutter. And that was kind of the case with this image here. If I show you the raw file here, it's quite a bit different than the end result. You'll notice that the right side is very dark and the left side is very bright. And that's because this is the entrance to Fingal's cave. Now the right side is dark because that's the entrance to the cave. The left side is very bright because it's collecting ambient light. Now, if you look at this raw file carefully, you'll notice that most of your attention goes to the left side of the frame because that's the brightest part of the image and not so much to the right side. But I wanted to kind of equalize that out and also bring the viewer's attention more to the central part of the image, which is the most interesting part for me. So what I ended up doing was using a lot of dodging and burning, uh, graduated filters and the circular uh, graduated filter in Lightroom. You'll notice that in the final result here, what I've done Done is I brightened up the right side, darkened the uh, the left side, and then brightened up the central portion. And I think most of you will agree that the end result is much more desirable than uh, the raw file. Some of you may not like the heavy vignetting around the edges, and th and that's fine. The whole point in this exercise is just to show you how you can manipulate images to really draw the attention to the viewer to certain areas of the frame. All right, everybody. That's it for this week. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. And as always, if you enjoy the content on my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. All right, bye for now.